folks, Jason, Painfully Honest Tech, back again with another video about iOS 14. This time, new settings that you need to check out and set for yourself, a pronto. Hey there friends on YouTube, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. If this is your first time here, thanks for stopping by. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. I've got for you some more iOS 14 goodness. This time we're talking about settings in iOS that you can change to get some more value, some more use, some more safety, some more privacy, some more whatever, some better stuff out of your device. And so without further ado, let's begin with setting number one. And it's one that's been asked about quite a bit over the years. People have been wondering, and yes, I know Android people, I know you've been able to do this. It's cool, whatever. Just let us have our moment here with iOS. All right, so we're gonna scroll over. We're gonna hit settings and we're gonna be able to select our default mail and web apps. What you need to do is you need to scroll down past just what is already sort of the default stuff here in the general section. Scroll down past that to the other apps and you can choose Chrome. And here in this section, you'll see Chrome. Uh, you can select Safari or Chrome or other browsers that you want to download, but Safari, Chrome, Firefox, those I know work. There are others out there that will work as well. And so that's how you set the web browser. Now, if you want to set the mail app to be something other than just Apple's default mail, you can go down here and I have downloaded Gmail because I use Gmail most of the time on the computers. So you hit default app and here I've got Gmail, mail and Outlook all selected right in here. So I select Gmail, I put it back, I put it back, we go back out and we're done. That is tip number one. So if you've been hankering for, you know, your, your favorite web browser, whatever, this is the feature for you. Number two, turning off like sort of the exact location privacy settings for different apps. This is something that is, <laughs> A little bit different than just like having the app generally know where you are. It's like, this is like, knows exactly where you are, like the pin on the map, kind of like you're, you're there. And you don't want all your apps to know that, do you? I, I know that I don't, I just feel a little weird about it. And who knows who could get a hold of that information. So now you can change it from precise location to something else. So how do you do that? You go into settings, you go down to privacy, you go to location services and you see here, they all say uh, that you can do whatever you want. So Apple Watch Workout has everything that I need. But does Apple Watch faces need to know my precise location? I, I don't know if they do. So I'm going to take that away. And then I'm going to look down here. Uh, CBS Sports doesn't need to know my precise location. You see, you can just go through and, say, and select different things like uh, if you don't want YouTube to know exactly where you are, <laughs> which might be a good thing for some people, um, then you just go ahead and select that and you go back and boom, bang, you've done it. So that's how you turn off the precise location uh, setting in the apps that track your location. You can now filter unknown or I guess spam or, or people that aren't in your contacts messages from messages. You go into settings, you go find, well, get out of location services, you go find messages, messages. Then you'll see down here, filter unknown senders. You go to filters once you get back to your messages app. And then you've got all messages, you've got known senders, and you've got unknown senders. And I have 83 unknown senders, so I'm going to I'm going to get rid of them. And then I only have the ones that I, yeah, that's, that's a good thing. So when, if you get automated texts and all that kind of stuff, then they'll go into that unknown sender thing and you can check them periodically, but they won't clog up your main window in messages, which is awesome. Amazing. Another privacy setting that you'll probably want to check out is Wi-Fi privacy. So this is a little bit different. So what you do here 
is you go to, through settings to Wi-Fi, then you click on the Wi-Fi network that you're on, and it says Wi-Fi address, and you hit, and then you read you rejoin your private network, you rejoin your network, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and it, but what it does is this is not like your Wi-Fi address. So you won't be able to be tracked in that way. Again, safety, privacy, sound recognition turn off. This is a battery saving feature that I, I think is worth checking out. In order to do this, you go to access accessories. <laughs> you go to accessibility, you go to sound recognition, and when it's turned on, uh, you can select different sounds that you want iOS to be looking for, like fire engine, smoke, siren. I guess you would hear a smoke alarm. Okay. Cat, dog, you know, so, so car horns, blah, blah, blah. You can be notified when those things are happening. Good for people who need that kind of stuff. But maybe you don't. So instead of selecting any of those, you can just set sound recognition off and go back out and go back out to the main settings menu and you're good to go. One of my favorites, actually, one of my favorites do with Apple Music. And in Apple Music, you can now select something that will, will keep you from having to dig for other things to listen to. This is something that's existed in other music apps for quite some time, but now Apple Music has it, so we're just gonna check it out. Here we are, we are in the Band Essentials and Apple Music uh, playlist, I guess it is, an Apple Music playlist. Uh, we can say play, and here, it just starts to play. I'm gonna not get copyright strikes. See that guy right there? That's the one you wanna hit. It looks like an infinity symbol. It's right next to the shuffle and, and repeat functions. But what it does is, okay, so I'm playing this this and it, you know once we get past the last song it will keep on selecting new music for you to listen to that is somewhat in the vein of what you were already listening to which is good for two reasons one if you're doing something and you're just jamming out on your tunes uh it, you don't have to worry about the music stopping and then you go back and then you find something else and whatever you were doing you're just not doing it anymore two you are able to uh, find new music, which, I mean, I, I like to listen to old music, but there are often times when I find new music or other old music that I didn't know about if I use a feature like this. So this is a good feature and it's worth putting on. It's only here in Apple Music on the phone. I wasn't able to find it in the iTunes app or Apple Music or whatever it is on the Mac, but hopefully it gets there sometime soon if it's not already there and I can't find it. If you use Apple Music, this is a really great feature. If you use a different service, this feature might already exist on your service, so check that out. Another music related feature, and this is, <laughs> I like this. I like this one a lot. Uh, you can now turn on Shazam and use it in the home center here, the control center. In order to do that, you go to settings, control center, then you scroll down here and uh, you, you see that you got Shazam, music recognition, they call it. Uh, I don't know if Apple bought Shazam or not, but anyway, Shazam is a cool thing. What it does is if you're out and about someplace and you hear a song and you wanna know what it is, uh, you just activate Shazam and it'll listen, it'll tell you exactly what song it is, uh, who did it, what album is on, all kinds of good stuff. So it's a really cool feature. And now that it's sort of baked into iOS, this is pretty cool. So you can put it here and you can put, you know, you can move it around anywhere you want. Uh, let's see, I'll put it right below timer. Once we grab the right hand side and scroll to the control center, we go Shazam, Shazam! And it's on and it's listening and whenever you hear music, whenever it hears music, it'll tell you what it is, but you can also turn it off. Number eight is sleep mode or wind down time. And again, just got done using the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. This is something that's been available for quite a long time. Uh, this is Apple's version of it here for the iPhone. So let's go ahead and check it out. What you wanna do is you wanna go to uh, clock and then you see here, you got sleep, wake up. You've got no alarm. Even if you had an alarm set before, you it's, it's not you know current, okay? So let's go change and let's set up in health. 
next. Uh, no, I need only I need only seven hours. So okay, next. Uh, your schedules. Bedtime 11:30. Wake up. Okay, that's that's good. I like it. I like it. Next. Sleep mode. Enable sleep mode. Sleep mode can automatically simplify your lock screen and your schedule at your scheduled bedtime. Also turns on dis do not disturb and reduces interruptions, etc., etc. That's good. That's good. So wind down 45 minutes before uh, the time that I'm re I'm supposed to be going to bed. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll see how it works up. Setup and shortcuts. Okay. So we got a journaling app. I'm down with that. I'm down. Yeah. Okay. Let's just open notes. Yeah. So another shortcut. Uh, mindfulness? No, but music? Yes. I do mindfulness in the morning, so... Okay, let's, uh, let's just open music and we'll select something. Uh, then we've got my home. Yeah. Set evening. Okay. So you can select a few things to, to help you go to sleep and, and, and then you're done. You've got seven hours of sleep starting at 11.30 and then sleep mode, wind down and do not disturb mode all happening all at once and it's all on your schedule. So sleep mode and wind down, very, very cool features. The last one I want to talk about today is something that has always been really annoying. And again, yes, I know, something that you could always change in Android, but now you can change it here in iOS 14, is uh, telling iOS not to put apps on your home screen when you download them, okay? Which, if you don't have all of your home screen apps turned off, as I do, I just have App Library accessible as well as these widgets, okay? It will throw it on the back end just like it always does you don't really want that so what we do is we go to settings we go to home screen settings home screen you can either say add to home screen or add to library only and i, I actually already had it set to add to library only see now i was using this in the beta and i probably just saw that but it's simple it's easy it will keep you from just having apps build up on the back end of your of your stuff and i don't want just random apps on my screen anymore i just want to be able to have the stuff that i want and to then have the app library and to be able to just go ahead and hit search and let's say i want to say i want to find a gmail there's the gmail okay so that's that's great so those are the i think it's eight the eight those are the eight features the eight settings that i think you should turn on right away in order to get the most out of ios 14. now i'm going to be back with some other specific things for home kits specific things for music etc etc so if you're not subscribed already subscribe to be ready for those videos but in the meantime Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Once again, my name's Jason, sometimes known as the JTO. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech, so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.